I'm here at home working on some personal projects, and this is during the 2020 shelter at home directive that pretty much is happening around the world. Well, some of the projects that I want to work on involve the .NET Core framework. Now, I plan to run these on a Raspberry Pi. An obvious solution for doing this is to install Windows IoT Core on a Raspberry Pi and use .NET Core from there. But that actually isn't necessary. You can keep Linux on your Raspberry Pi and still run the and still run .NET Core applications. So in this video, I'm just going to go through these steps of getting .NET Core installed on a Raspberry Pi. And I've already tried this out in my Raspberry Pi 3. Within this video, I'm going through the steps of installing it on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I've already installed it on my 4. In this video, I'm going through the steps of installing it on the 3, which are identical. Now, just one other thing. You're probably going to hear some background noise. You might hear a dog bark. You might hear a lawnmower go on. Uh, right now, with everyone being at home, I have found that there's not really any way that I can find a truly quiet environment. So that's just going to end up being part of the video. Here I am. I'm on my computer. I'm going to do everything over SSH. It's just easier for me. So I'm starting off on doing this from my Mac. Uh, I need to get the URL to the installation for the uh, particular version of the .NET Core runtime that I'm going to install. If I can do that by going to .NET.Microsoft.com. Uh, when you get there on a landing page, there's an obvious download button. And we want to see all of the .NET Core downloads. The most recent, recent version is the .NET Core 3.1 uh, runtime. When we get to this page, you can see that they have a number of different downloads and different CPU architectures. For now, the only thing that we need is the SDK itself, which has a runtime within it. Uh, on another video, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take a look at that ASP Core runtime because I also have some interest here. But under the SDK, uh, I'm doing this in Raspberry Pi, which is running Linux. And like if you have the Raspberry Pi 4, yes, that's a 64 bit processor, but if you're running uh, Ras Raspbian, that's still a 32 bit operating system, so you need to use the 32 bit version of the tools. There do exist 64-bit uh, Linux images for the Raspberry Pi on which you could use a 64-bit ARMS image, but using a standard Raspbian image, uh, you can't use 64-bit yet. If I click on this, you can see it tries to download, but I'm not interested in downloading it directly. Uh, I just want to get the URL. So copying that, and now I'm going to SSH into my device. Okay, so I'm connecting to my device. See password. Okay, I'm connected. Uh, now I've got to um, make some decisions about where I'm going to download things and where I'm going to install it. And I'm just going to use a downloads folder for holding this. Actually, you make just keep things clean. Let me make a .NET subdirectory. Okay, now to download, I have the URL, so I can download by using the wget command and just providing it with the URL that I copied earlier. And so it's downloading, and since I'm connected to the Pi, this is downloading um, onto the Pi's uh, drive. Okay, the download is there. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to unpackage it. Uh, now, I already know where I want to get it unpackaged. I need to make a folder for this. So, in the USR, uh, this is from the root, USR, there is a subfolder called share. Now, I want to put .NET within there. And the reason, oops, forgot, I need to use sudo in order to do this. And the reason I'm putting it in this location is I did notice that some uh, software will automatically look uh, at that location for the default location for the uh, framework. Now, if you use a different location, if you decide to use a different location, that's fine with the steps that I'm following. This is going to work at any location. Let's see if I type my command correctly. MKDIR. Okay. We have the location. So I need to use the tar command to unpackage this. Let's see, with the argument ZXF. Uh, and then it just needs the name of the file. Okay. So there's the file, followed by dash C. And then I need the location at which I want everything in package. So that once again, that's USR, uh, share, and then I made the subfolder .NET. And of course, once again, I've made a mistake. Let's do this again. Uh, the mistake that I made is 
uh, to unpackage that folder, I need to go ahead and do this under sudo. Now that it's unzipped, let's go to the location and take a look at what's there. Okay, looking at this folder, the thing that's most important is you see there's an executable there called .NET. Uh, if we run it, just to make sure it works. Okay, cool. So it works. If you use the .NET Core runtime before, then you are familiar with uh, this executable. Uh, you end up using it a lot. But right now, the issue is that in order to use it, I either need to, to type the complete path or change to that folder, and that's just not going to work for our purposes. Like here from my home directory, if I type .NET, command not found. Uh, there's a few ways that we can go about fixing this. Um, the one that I'm going to use is I am going to make an update to the .profiles file. PR, oops, nano. Okay. So in .profile, uh, there's already going to be some stuff there, which is fine. We can ignore most of what's there. We just need to add a few things. Um, we're going to update the path environment variable so that it uh, keeps whatever I had in it before. But then it also needs to have, let's see, USR share .net. I'm also adding the path to that specific folder to uh, our path environment variable. Now I'm also going to make a new environment variable. It's going to be called .net root. And some tools will take a look at this whenever it's looking for the .NET Core runtime. And it's going to be set equal to that same folder. And so that's all that I need. So let's go ahead and save this. Exit. And so that it takes uh, effect, I'm going to reboot. Okay, I'm reconnecting back to my Pi. Let's make sure that uh, .NET is visible now. So D-O-T, N-E-T, and it's there and I didn't have to change folder. So next step, let's make a project. And this project, is, as you can see, is gonna be called Hello World and it will do exactly what you think it will do. Uh, there's nothing in here right now since I just created this folder. Uh, to create a new project, I use .NET new console because I want to create a new console project and it'll do its thing and take care of creating a new project for me. Okay, the new project is created, so let's see what's in this folder now. Uh, we see the source file. Uh, actually, let me clear this and do this again. Okay, we see there's a source file, there's a project file. I'm not worried about the OBJ. Let's take a look at what's inside the source file. And there it is, hello world. Uh, just to make a small change to it, hello world from j2i.net. So let's save this. Exit from here, and now I want to build it. So .NET build. So it's taking care of doing all the steps that are required to build this and produce an executable from it. Uh, it the build was successful. We'd once again take a look at the folders that we have within here. There's a new folder that's called bin. Let's see what's inside of bin. Okay, there's debug. So go inside of there and there's one more folder inside of it, net core app 3.1. Within here, uh, there's a number of files, but you can see our executable is among them, uh, hello world. So if I run that, then there's my message, hello world from j2i.net. So that's all that's necessary in order to get the uh, .NET Core SDK and runtime installed uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Now, just one other thing I didn't mention, um, I'm doing this on a Raspberry Pi 3 right now. I've already done this on my Raspberry Pi 4. If you try it on a Raspberry Pi 0, uh, you're gonna end up running into a bit of an issue. You can get as far as compiling, but not running. 
Uh, and part of the reason is the .NET Core runtime expects you to have an ARM 7 processor, whereas the Raspberry Pi Zero has an ARM 6 processor. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the .NET Core uh, runtime is completely unavailable to you. Uh, there are some ways to get some of the functionality of it available within the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I'll show you how to do that in another video. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, I also have a blog at, if you go to j2i.net, it'll redirect you to the blog where you'll be able to find a write-up about this and many other things there. So if you're interested, check it out. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments area below. Bye.